The Museum of the Rockies, MOR, in Bozeman, Montana, is a treasure trove of natural history and cultural artifacts, with a particular emphasis on the region's rich dinosaur heritage. But before you even step inside, you'll be greeted by a colossal resident standing guard, Big Mike, a life-size bronze sculpture of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Big Mike isn't just any T-Rex though, He's a cast of the T-Rex discovered in Montana in 1988 by Kathy Wankel and one of the most complete T-Rex skeletons ever found. Standing an impressive 15 feet tall, 38 feet long, and weighing a staggering 10,000 pounds, Big Mike offers a breathtaking glimpse into the world of these giant predators. We started our tour through MOR with the Unbridled Spirit exhibit, which showcases the amazing photography of Barbara Van Cleve. This exhibit celebrates the life and lens of this remarkable photographer. Van Cleve, raised on a Montana ranch, isn't your typical cowboy photographer. Her black and white images transcend romanticized notions of the West, offering a raw and intimate glimpse into the lives of working ranch women and men. Her photos transport you to the rugged beauty of the American West, where dust rises from cattle drives, the wind whispers through weathered fences, and the spirit of independence pulses strong. You will gaze into the weathered faces of ranchers, etched with the stories of the land and seasons. You will witness the daily rhythm of ranch life, men and women wrangling cattle, mending fences, and taking care of animals, all captured with tenderness and respect. You will also be immersed in the vast landscapes of Montana, snow-capped peaks, endless rolling plains, and sun-drenched valleys, that paint the backdrop for these stories of human endeavor. The exhibit also encompasses life beyond the ranch, showcasing rodeos, small town gatherings, and the quiet moments of solitude that punctuate the busy rhythm of ranch life. More than just photographs, Van Cleve's images are storytelling gems. They whisper tales of hard work, family bonds, and a deep connection to the land. Each frame sparks curiosity, inviting you to contemplate the lives of these individuals and the values that shape their world. But unbridled spirit isn't just about nostalgia. It's a vibrant conversation about the evolving West, challenging stereotypes and highlighting the enduring spirit of these communities. Alongside Van Cleve's photographs, the museum showcases curated artifacts, including a Kodak Brownie Jr. camera, which was the first camera Barbara started taking pictures with at 11 years old, and a number of other ranch items, adding depth and perspective to the stories captured on film. The next exhibit is called The Zoo in You, and has interactive stations where you can learn all about the human microbiome. Trillions of microbes make their homes inside our bodies, and we wouldn't be able to survive without each other. Zoo in You invites members and visitors of all ages to explore this fascinating and complex world inside us. You will learn that our microbiome is a dynamic, adaptable, and delicately balanced ecosystem like any other found in nature. Exploring this vibrant world, you will discover who our constant microbial companions are, where they live, how diverse they are, and in what ways scientists are learning just how important they are to our own health. Next, we step into the captivating Paul History Hall, where stories of the northern Rocky Mountains come alive, weaving a tapestry that connects us to the past and illuminates the lives of those who came before us. We walk towards a corner of the hall, where there is currently an exhibit that showcases the unique and diverse artwork of Helen McCausland. Born in 1895 in Rhode Island, McCausland embarked on a life filled with adventure and artistic exploration. She traveled extensively, soaking up influences from various cultures and landscapes. Yet, it was the rugged beauty of Montana that truly captured her heart. In 1946, she made the state her permanent home, establishing a ranch in Springdale and then ultimately settling down, building a cabin near McLeod along the Boulder River. Her artwork captures the essence of the American West, particularly the landscapes and wildlife of Montana and the Rocky Mountain region. She combines meticulous detail with a profound sense of place, evoking the beauty, tranquility, and ruggedness of the Western landscape. McCausland's work is renowned for its authenticity and depth, reflecting her deep connection to the land and her dedication to portraying its nuances with reverence and skill. Perhaps the most influential activity to McCausland's developing art career was her time spent traveling. Many of her paintings and drawings reflect enticing places she traveled to. In addition to Montana, McCausland's adventures led her to places such as Europe, Asia, Africa, and the Caribbean. The remainder of the hall takes you on a journey from early exploration to the mid-20th century. These thought-provoking exhibitions vividly depict the cultural and social transformations brought about by the diverse individuals who called this region home. 
you'll see a 1930s house and filling station, a family home and business enterprise, common in the northern Rocky Mountain region in the 1920s and 1930s. Pass by stagecoaches and read about air campers. Aviation came to Montana with World War I. By the early 1930s, ranchers and farmers were building their own flying flivers, often from kits or plans published in magazines such as Modern Mechanics. The historic solo flight of Colonel Charles A. Lindbergh from New York to Paris in 1927 fired the enthusiasm of brothers Tom and Ben Helmerichs to build a flying machine of their own. You can learn about the rich history of mining in the region. Between 1850 and 1950, millions of dollars worth of minerals were extracted from Montana's mountains and hills. Close by is a wrought iron rifled cannon, one of about 1,100 manufactured for use during the Civil War. It is next to a number of artifacts highlighting the Rocky Mountain fur trade of the 19th century. And then, you'll find some fascinating commemorative quilts that not only provided warmth, but also preserved family memories, connected communities, and told stories about the people who made or used them. The final section of the poor history hall that we walked through highlighted the evolution of transportation and the variety of vehicles used in the region. This includes the Model T Ford, a symbol of early 20th century transportation that democratized car ownership and revolutionized travel. Next to the Model T, we can examine a number of stagecoaches, or buggies and wagons, that were drawn by horses. Horse-drawn coaches played a pivotal role in the transportation system of the American West during the 19th and early 20th centuries. These thought-provoking exhibitions vividly depict the cultural and social transformations brought about by the diverse individuals who called this region home. It is a treasure trove of historical artifacts, captivating photographs, evocative murals, and carefully selected pieces that deepen our understanding of the area's rich history. Next, we enter the Enduring Peoples exhibit. This exhibition examines the lifeways of American Indians living on the Northern Plains and near the Rocky Mountains. It illustrates how they have retained their cultural identities despite great challenges. Indian cultures in the region have endured from Paleo to modern American times. Traditionally, these peoples followed the vast herds of bison that once covered the region. As Euro-Americans moved onto the lands that American Indians had lived on for generations, conflicts became inevitable. Ultimately, the American Indians of the region were forced onto small areas of land that they reserved for themselves in their negotiations with the United States government. Although life has changed for Indians in the region, traditions endure. American Indians have inhabited the Northern Plains and the Rockies for over 12,000 years. Most were mobile hunters and gatherers. Traditional native life remained largely intact until the 1800s. Competition for resources and the introduction of horses, metal, guns, cloth, and canvas by outsiders significantly affected Indian cultures. Culture is the sum total of ways of living built up by a people and transmitted from one generation to another. There is a tremendous amount of similarity as well as diversity in Indian cultures throughout the region. With time, all cultures change. However, today's Indian life still reflects some traditions that are hundreds of years old. This exhibition honors the American Indian heritage and their efforts to preserve their unique ceremonies, religious rituals, languages, and stories. We then step into the captivating world of Yellowstone Country. This exhibit introduces visitors to this remarkable region nestled in the northern Rocky Mountains. We delve into the fascinating history of tourism and hospitality that took root with the establishment of Yellowstone National Park in 1872. This includes the stories of visionary entrepreneurs, such as Charles A. Hamilton. Finally, we enter the most famous part of the museum, the Seabull Dinosaur Complex. The Museum of the Rockies is a center of active research and exploration into the ancient past. Fossils have been found across much of Montana, and the Paleontology Department at MOR is dedicated to researching the deep past of the state and surrounding regions. We see the skulls of mammoths along with a large collection of prehistoric mammals that once roamed the state, including rhinos and bone-crushing dogs. We are in the Cenozoic Corridor at the Museum of the Rockies, which takes you on a journey through the last 66 million years of Earth's history, specifically focusing on the evolution of life in the Northern Rockies during the Cenozoic era. You will encounter fossils of fish, birds, reptiles, and mammals that tell the story of changing environments and diverse ecosystems, you can learn how life adapted and flourished in the Rockies over millions of years. The corridor provides a window into the incredible diversity of life and dynamic changes that have shaped this region. 
The MOR hosts one of the largest collections of North American dinosaurs in the world, including many examples of the gigantic carnivorous Tyrannosaurus rex. Montana's T-Rex is one of the few mounted Tyrannosaurus rex skeletons in the United States. In addition, the MOR displays a large number of horned Triceratops. Triceratops is one of the most recognizable and studied dinosaurs from the late Cretaceous period. Known for its distinctive three-horned face and large bony frill, Triceratops is a fascinating subject of study for paleontologists and dinosaur enthusiasts alike. The Museum of the Rockies boasts an impressive collection of Triceratops fossils, including multiple specimens that provide valuable insights into the anatomy, behavior, and evolutionary history of these iconic dinosaurs. Triceratops fossils are surprisingly common in the Rockies, particularly in the Hell Creek Formation, which stretches across Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, and South Dakota. This formation dates back to the late Cretaceous period, around 66 million years ago. The sheer number of Triceratops fossils suggests they were a thriving herbivore population in the Rockies' ancient ecosystem. An entire wall of the museum is dedicated to the growth series of the horned Triceratops, showing skulls ranging from juveniles to giants. The Triceratops exhibits at the Museum of the Rockies have contributed significantly to scientific research. The museum's collection continues to be a vital resource for ongoing research and discoveries in the field of paleontology. We then come face to face with a world-class fossilized T-Rex skeleton. Tyrannosaurus rex, meaning, Tyrant Lizard King, roamed the Earth 65 million years ago. The MOR is now among only a handful of museums in the world to display such a specimen. In addition to Triceratops and T-Rex, the exhibit hall hosts a fossil of the Edmontosaurus, a large, herbivorous hadrosaurid dinosaur that lived during the late Cretaceous period, and the Hypsilophodontus, a small to medium-sized herbivorous dinosaur that lived during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. Dinosaur skulls of many shapes and sizes can be seen throughout the exhibition, and this famous collection also includes a variety of T-Rex skulls, including the largest and smallest skulls ever discovered. This impressive collection, including Montana's T-Rex, is without a doubt, a must-see at the museum. We continue our exploration, viewing fossils from marine reptiles and invertebrates from the Bearpaw Sea, over 60 million years old. The Museum of the Rockies has an extensive collection of fossil discoveries from all around the region. We see artifacts from the Pachycephalosaurus, fossils excavated from river formations, learn about duck-billed teeth and feeding, and gain an understanding of dinosaur sounds. The exhibit also includes a variety of dinosaur eggs and egg clutches, as well as numerous other fossils revealing insights such as dinosaur growth, cranial ontology, and predators. As many of these specimens were discovered in Montana, they provide valuable insights into the diversity, ecology, and evolutionary history of dinosaurs in North America. And the museum continues to play a pivotal role in paleontological discoveries, with ongoing excavations, fieldwork, and research. In addition to the many fossils, the walls of the Museum of the Rockies is adorned with a number of dinosaur illustrations. For the most part, they are typically based on scientific research and discoveries, aiming to provide accurate representations of these prehistoric creatures. Paleontologists work closely with artists to ensure that the pictures reflect accurate dinosaur anatomy, behavior, and ecology. This collaborative approach ensures that the artwork is both scientifically rigorous and visually compelling. The museum's dinosaur illustrations encompass a range of artistic styles and techniques. They help to bring the ancient world of dinosaurs to life, allowing visitors to visualize these creatures as they may have appeared millions of years ago. They serve an important educational role, depicting dinosaur biology, evolution, and paleoecology, visually conveying scientific concepts in an engaging manner. Through these illustrations, visitors can explore the fascinating world of dinosaurs, learn about the methods used to study these ancient creatures, and appreciate the ongoing scientific research that continues to expand our knowledge of the dinosaur era. But the Museum of the Rockies Dinosaur Exhibit does not end there. It continues into the Hall of Giants, where we meet Oryctodromus, the first dinosaur known to dig burrows and care for its young inside its dens. We also dip into the oceans of Montana, where carnivorous marine reptiles roamed under the surface of the vast seaway that covered much of North America during the Age of Dinosaurs. The hall includes a Tenontosaurus skeleton, along with a large sauropod. We also meet Deinonychus, a North American cousin of Velociraptor, and examine the evidence for how this carnivore may have hunted. This dinosaur is under the Big Sky exhibit, 
also includes a number of informative panels, multimedia presentations, and interactive stations highlighting the evolution of these amazing beasts in this region. Sometimes, you can watch the process of paleontology in action, in an on-site lab, where volunteers prepare dinosaur fossils for research. It should be noted that the Museum of the Rockies is not only a museum, but also an active research institution. Unfortunately, there was no one working there during our visit, but we turned around and went to the Mesozoic Overlook. To get to the Mesozoic Overlook, you have to walk up a few flights of stairs, but it is well worth the effort. As you ascend the stairs, you can get a bird's eye view of the Hall of Giants. This extensive collection of dinosaur fossils includes rare and significant specimens that provide valuable insights into the prehistoric world and contribute to scientific research. The museum has many educational programs that cater to diverse audiences and offer engaging experiences that promote learning and discovery. MOR also has a commitment to scientific research, attracting scholars and researchers. At the very top of the stairway, the displays provide an overview of the process of paleontology, from the initial discovery of a fossil to preparation, an examination of microstructure, and cataloging in the paleontology collection, you can get a glimpse of how paleontologists bring fossils back to life. You can also get a good look at Big Al, one of the most complete Allosaurus ever discovered, whose skeleton records evidence of a tough life. Back downstairs, we learn that 530 million years ago, the ancestors of nearly all modern animals lived in Earth's waters. These creatures were buried in an underwater mudslide, in what today is Yoho National Park in Western Canada. All vertebrates, or animals with backbones, are thought to have descended from the tiny Pekaia and its relatives. We continue to explore the time even before the dinosaur, exploring the earliest life in a microbial world. This is the Paleozoic Era. During this time, life was primitive and included many invertebrates, or animals without backbones, and the earliest fish and amphibians. We travel through the hardened earth crust, and learn that all life is interconnected. Rocks and fossils of the northern Rocky Mountains are rich in stories about ancient landscapes and past lives. Geologic forces have transformed our region from volcanic cauldron, to tropical sea, to the mountains of today. Across the changing landscape, a miraculous succession of life has left a tantalizing trail to ponder. Whether or not they were evolutionary successes, all life forms, from bacteria, to fish, to dinosaurs, to humans, left their marks on this earth. The tour of the museum ends with a fun and mesmerizing rolling ball machine entitled Earthworks. Earthworks is a large cube of ball tracks and other machinery enclosed in a plexiglass cocoon. It attempts to illustrate various recurring cycles in the Earth, such as food and water cycles, and the recycling of rock in the Earth's crust. The rolling balls represent packets of energy within the system. As with all rolling ball kinetic sculptures, Earthworks is fun to watch. We hope you have enjoyed this tour of the Museum of the Rockies. Please like, follow, and subscribe.